Did you know children can have acute ischemic strokes just like adults? It's very rare, but I wanna go through the case study that I presented yesterday of a five-year-old girl who presented to the emergency department with acute right-sided weakness. Her family noticed that all of a sudden when playing with her siblings, she was not able to move her arm or leg. A stroke code was called, an MRI of the brain was subsequently performed that shows this left-sided MCA stroke, which you can see by all this white changes in the brain on these sequences. The DWI and ADC are types of MRI sequences that we use to help detect stroke, and this is her MRI angiogram, which helps us look at the blood vessels of the brain. Many of you guys got the answer correctly that she did have a stroke, but I wanna know why a five-year-old would have an ischemic stroke. He has something called Moya Moya disease. So let's talk about it. Moya Moya disease is a rare blood vessel disorder that causes the carotid artery within the skull to become narrowed. And like I talked about in a video yesterday, it is one of the main arteries that supply blood to the brain. If the vessel becomes narrowed like this, that means reduced blood flow to the brain and that can cause a stroke. Moya Moya disease most commonly affects children, but can affect people of all ages. It's found all over the world, but is more common in Eastern Asian countries such as Korea, Japan, and China. And that's because it's thought to be related to genetic factors in this population. It's a chronic isolated vasculopathy of one or both carotid arteries. English, please. That means for some reason that we don't know about, these vessels become narrowed over a long period of time. And as that vessel becomes more and more narrow over time, our brain will compensate by making additional new blood vessels to help supply that part of the brain. This finding on angiography is often referred to as the puff of smoke sign. It's associated with other inherited conditions including sickle cell anemia, Down syndrome, and neurofibromatosis type one. It can also be acquired in patients that have head or neck radiation, skull-based tumors, or chronic meningitis. It can often be associated with atherosclerosis of the cerebral vessels as well as vasculitis. There's two peak distributions of ages in which the disease is usually seen, ages five to nine years old and ages 45 to 49 years old. In children, it often presents as a TIA or a stroke. It's usually precipitated by hyperventilation when the child is crying like playing with their siblings. Remember this child at baseline has pretty narrow blood vessels in the brain and any type of increasing constriction of the blood vessel may cause hypoperfusion. Basically when we breathe really fast, like when we're crying, it can cause the blood vessels to constrict. And normally it doesn't matter if we have normal blood flow, but in someone with compromised blood flow, that could cause a stroke. These tiny little fragile blood vessels can also rupture and cause an intracerebral hemorrhage or bleeding on the brain. That can be life-threatening. Children can develop an intellectual disability related to the chronic depletion of blood flow to the brain. We diagnose this disorder by using angiography where we look at the blood vessels in the brain. This is our patient's MRA scan that shows the right middle cerebral artery is perfusing, although it is a little smaller than it should be, and the left MCA should be right here and it's missing with a puff of smoke. Those are those tiny little blood vessels that have tried to develop over time. This is what we should see in a normal cerebral angiogram where we have the carotid that's injected bilaterally that goes into the skull base and then divides into the anterior cerebral arteries and the middle cerebral arteries. That's compared to what we may see on a patient with Moya Moya disease. Doctor, that's great and all, but how do we treat it and how do we help this child? Here's the thing, there is no curative treatment for Moya Moya and we need to detect it early in order to have the best outcome. Medical options can only help with secondary prevention and there is no halting the progression of the disease. Both medical and surgical options are aimed to increasing blood flow to the brain. Although aspirin is conventionally used, there is no evidence that there is actually endothelial damage to the blood vessels, so antiplatelet medications really don't help. But what are the surgical options? We can take a branch of the external carotid artery called the superficial temporal artery and actually sew it to the brain. We do a small craniotomy where we remove a portion of the skull and we sew this vessel to the dura or the covering of the brain. That procedure is called an EDAS procedure. It is indirectly vascularizing the brain by giving it more blood flow from a location that's not diseased. This is a much easier way to provide increased circulation to the brain, but it does take time. If we take a new blood vessel and sew it directly to the diseased blood vessel, 
That's called direct vascularization and that can improve blood flow almost immediately. This procedure is done by a highly skilled vascular surgeon. It's technically very difficult to perform because these blood vessels are like the size of spaghetti noodles or smaller. Essentially, you take the good blood vessel, cut it and sew it to the bad blood vessel and you get complete restoration of flow almost immediately. And these types of sutures are some of the smallest stitches that are made. You can't even really see them with the blind eye and it requires high magnification. Technically speaking, in my opinion, one of the most difficult cases that you can perform in neurosurgery. I was lucky to witness a few of these procedures while I was in my residency, but I do not perform this procedure in practice. Our patient was taken to a pediatric specialized hospital with an interdisciplinary team. That's a bunch of subspecialized doctors that can help manage a critically ill patient with a difficult problem like hers. Unfortunately, she did suffer some permanent damage to that side of her brain. She's currently being assessed to see if she is a candidate for some of the procedures that I mentioned. These are rare and very challenging cases. It's good to have the awareness that this can happen even in children. No matter what the age of the patient is, always remember the BFAST algorithm to spot a stroke. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.